Hello and welcome back to another GCSE revision video. Now, when it comes to a Christmas carol, word on the streets is the theme that may well come up in this year's GCSE exams is the theme of the supernatural. The notion of how the supernatural is used within the novella is a key theme that a number of you guys believe is going to be the question that comes up in the upcoming Christmas Carol GCSE exam. So guys, what I want to do within this lesson is to show you guys how to craft a perfect GCSE essay on the theme of the supernatural and Christmas Carol should that question come up in your final GCSE exams. Now guys, before I get into how to craft a perfect response to this central theme within this novella, I want to remind you guys that next week on Tuesday, I'm going to be running a one-off Christmas Carol GCSE literature class. Where I'm going to be going over model answers to GCSE exam questions to so make sure you sign up. This is gonna take place just two weeks before the final GCSEs. So let's get to it. Supernatural. What could you write about if this really important theme comes up? And if it does come up, uh, there's only been one other instances asking how uh, Dickens uses the ghost to change Scrooge. Now, one thing I want to point out, if you're writing about this theme, and if this is a theme that appears in this year's GCSE exams, is make sure you tie the notion of how Dickens uses the theme of the supernatural to also portray the theme of time, okay? They actually work hand in hand. And this is how you do so, okay? So, in your essay, in your winning essay, in your GCSE essay on the theme of the supernatural, this is how to begin it and this is how to tie in the notion of time and how it's used together with the supernatural. Remember that. Firstly, when considering this central theme within this novella, you need to mention and to show an awareness of the fact that the supernatural is used to illustrate how the ghosts trigger Scrooge's change, okay? Indeed, the ghosts inspire Scrooge to be generous, okay? So, of course, the supernatural plays an important part within this novella in triggering and transforming Scrooge to change from being greedy and miserly to being generous, charita charitable, and giving. Now, what you need to remember is supernatural and time are closely connected and closely linked. In other words, remember to also make it clear in your thesis statement within your introduction that the supernatural ghosts, okay, so all of the ghosts, Molly's ghost, the ghost of Christmas present, past and future, they are all used to distort our sense of time because even if the story takes place in just a 24 hour window of time, the supernatural takes us and the ghosts take us back to the past, present and the future. In other words, the supernatural is uh, is used to pull Scrooge out of his predictable routine in the known world, okay, in the known world where time just follows this chronological order. The ghosts pull him out of that routine and that predictability and take him into the unknown supernatural world, okay? Make that really clear. And it is this journey that Scrooge is taken on by the supernatural into the unknown world that encourages him and triggers his redemption. Make sure you make that really, really clear in your winning opening paragraph and in your thesis statement. The supernatural is used to trigger Scrooge to change. However, Dickens uses the supernatural figures, okay, the ghost, to distort our sense of time. Now, your first paragraph should be to do with how the ghost of Christmas past is used to symbolize and to illustrate this central theme of the supernatural. What do you talk about when you're writing about the ghost of Christmas past? Remember, the ghost of Christmas past is used to symbolize the past, right? So of course, Scrooge's childhood, as well as memory. And of course, the ghost of Christmas past, the supernatural character is also used to illustrate how important time is, okay? Remember that Dickens, in the story, within stave two now takes us back to the past, okay? And he disorders this time using the ghost of Christmas past to show how Scrooge, his painful childhood shaped the greedy miser that he became. And equally, Scrooge is presented by the ghost of Christmas past with Fezziwig. He is reminded of his very generous boss, who was very kind and very charitable to him when he was an apprentice, okay? And of course, this journey into the past inspires generosity within Scrooge because Scrooge is forced to reflect on his own actions towards Bob Cratchit. And this makes him realize that he equally needs to be generous towards Will Cratchit, much like Fezziwig was generous towards him. Now, the quotations that you want to talk about when you're writing about the theme of the supernatural and connecting it also to time, okay, is firstly, of course, a description 
of the ghost itself, okay? Its description already symbolizes Scrooge's current state as an old man, but equally, Scrooge's state when he was a child, he was abandoned, he was left in boarding school, and of course, also when he was a very hopeful and energetic young, young apprentice, okay? This is illustrated in the quotation that the ghost is like a child, but also like an old man, okay? So make sure you point out that interesting use of oxymoron, which of course symbolizes memory. Equally, the description of Fezziwig is really key in this case, okay? Because we learned that a light appeared as Fezziwig was dancing by his calves, okay? So the quotation is, light appeared, ellipsis, Fezziwig's calves. What does this show? The ghost of Christmas past and the supernatural figure within the novella in stave two is used to demonstrate the theme of charity, the notions, of course, make sure you tie this into the theme of charity, this ghost wants to illustrate to Scrooge how being generous to your workers, especially as a Victorian businessman, for instance, will make you happier, more joyful and lighter, okay? So that's your first winning paragraph when it comes to the theme of the supernatural. Now, after you do this paragraph, literally work chronologically to the next ghost, which ghost comes in afterwards, okay? Of course, this is the ghost of Christmas present. Remember that, again, this ghost is used and it, um, is used by Dickens to distort our sense of time once more, okay? So we're then pulled much like Scrooge from the past to the present, okay? We're taken to Christmas present. And uh, Dickens represents or uses the ghost of Christmas present to represent joy as well as the Christmas spirit, okay? And although this ghost is used to um, present really jolly scenes of people celebrating, remember that, of course, the ghost takes Scrooge to, you know, Bob Cratchit's family who is celebrating this meager Christmas dinner, but they're really happy together. He takes them to see Fred and so on, right? So you've got this one jolly side of Christmas that this ghost presents to Scrooge. He equally presents a very frightening and haunting image of ignorance and want, okay? So whilst he shows jolly scenes of people celebrating, Christmas, he also presents us as readers and of course Scrooge with the haunting image of ignorance and want. Okay, remember that ignorance is used as a symbol to um, illustrate the children, the poor children who never went to school. As a result, they're gonna get decent jobs and as a result, they became menaces to society because they turned to crime, okay? That's what ignorance symbolizes and of course want symbolizes children whose parents couldn't give them very basic necessities because they were underpaid as a result of greedy businessmen like Scrooge not paying them very well, okay? So these two children who were very haunting, use supernatural language as well within your analysis, they are used to illustrate to Scrooge how his greed and his mistreatment of Bob Cratchit is creating instability and also creating future menaces that will also be a menace to Scrooge himself. Now the quotations, to use for this second paragraph on the theme of the supernatural is firstly, of course, how the uh, ghost is presented as a jolly giant, but equally, of course, this boy is ignorance, ellipsis, girl, want, okay? Of course, this illustrates, this quotation ties into this haunting image of these two children. And equally, make sure you highlight the ghost mocking and reminding Scrooge of his own words. When Scrooge asks these rhetorical questions, are there no prisons, ellipsis, workhouses, okay? So, of course, this rhetorical question is really powerful because it illustrates the contextual aspect that Dickens wanted to criticize using this novella. The context point you want to make for this paragraph is to do with how Dickens was using this ghost and this supernatural character to criticize the 1834 New Poor Law, which basically punished the poor for being poor by telling them, look, if you can't get a job, you need to go to work in f for free in a workhouse. And you know, this workhouse is gonna give you accommodation. Often the accommodation was just a cold factory floor, okay? That's one side of the contextual um, information that you need to include. But equally, of course, this reference to these children, okay, these children who are suffering is also a reference to Thomas Malthus, okay? So, of course, remember that Dickens, not only, or rather Scrooge, not only does he ask that there are no um, prisons or there are no workhouses, he also says that the poor better die to decrease the surplus population. So, of course, the ghost is also reminding him of this because this is a direct reference to a theorist called Thomas Malthus who believed that, you know, pandemics, natural disasters, poor people dying off was actually good for society because it decreased the surplus population. Of course, Dickens was criticizing that. Now, end off your final paragraph within your winning essay, quite strong, by finishing off your third and final point 
with relating it to the ghost of Christmas future, yet another supernatural character. Now this ghost, what it does once more, remember guys, you want to intertwine your discussion of the supernatural with the theme of time, okay? Now, this ghost actually accelerates time forward. He transports Scrooge to a scary, ominous future, okay? And um, this ghost is used to represent death and hell. This ghost was really scary, it was menacing because it, um, it reminded Dickens's re Victorian readers of the afterlife, okay? Remember that Dickens's readers were very religious, they were quite Christian, and they believed in the afterlife. So they believed that, you know, if God punished them, he would send them to hell. Of course, if God rewarded them, they would go to heaven. Dickens is basically using this ghost to show lots of his rich Victorian readers that if they don't change, they don't become more um, charitable towards the poor, they will end up like Jacob Marley, and they will end up like Scrooge if they don't change, okay? So of course, this transportation, right? We as readers and Scrooge are taken into this horrible future, right? Where we see Tiny Tim has died, but equally Scrooge dies and everything is stolen from him, right? This takes us to the unknown and being in this unknown frightening future triggers Scrooge to change and become uh, more charitable. And because he genuinely changes, he's given a chance at redemption. Now, the quotations you want to use for this paragraph is, of course, the description of the ghost as a silent shape, really powerful sibilance. Also, when the ghost says, or rather when Scrooge says, I fear you more than any other spectre I, ever, I have seen, and equally how Scrooge demonstrates this theme of redemption. Make sure you tie this into the theme of redemption. He says, and he promises, related to the supernatural, that the spirits of all three shall live within me. And of course, when you're tying it to the theme of redemption, talk about how Dickens wrote this novella as a message to his readers, that especially his rich readers, if they genuinely changed and became more charitable, then they will be redeemed in God's eyes. Okay, the face, the possibility of going to heaven if they actually genuinely change and treat the workers charitably and give to the poor. Okay, so that's really it when it comes to how to write a perfect essay and a grade nine essay on the theme of the supernatural. Okay, start off with this thesis statement, this first paragraph on the ghost of Christmas past and of course the second paragraph and present and your third paragraph on the ghost of Christmas future. I hope this helped and thank you so much for listening.